I am fascinated by the human brain. Um, when I found out that there was technology that existed that we could just wear and will allow us to start getting information about our brains, our biology, I, I got like super excited because our brains, it, it consumes like around 20% of our energy, but the reason why it, this happens is because our brain is controlling all of our bodies, right? Inside our brains, we have neurons. Um, how many of you guys remember from your uh, classes back in the day, right? Uh, talking about cells and the neurons and how, they, um, and how they're formed, right? So it turns out we have billions of neurons in our, in our heads and they are in constant communication, right? Whenever a neuron communicates with another neuron, it's kind of like pops up uh, design pattern, the way that uh, it sends a message, the other ones receives it, and they form this like network of neurons, of billions of billions of neurons. And when this happens, um, they basically emit electricity. And this electricity is actually what uh, allows us to move our hands, allows us to, uh, to do our, all of our motor functions, allows us to think and do so many things, right? And there's so much to learn about the brain. If you ever heard of a neural network, right? They basically simulate the way our neurons within our bodies work. So you can see here how from a neuron to a neural network, um, they take information in and then they process it, but then they communicate in ways that they can get to an, um, to an end result very, very efficiently because our brains are extremely efficient at doing that. So for the, over the last year, I've, been, I've challenged myself with taking this information from the brain and try to get it to my comfort zone, and my comfort zone is the web, the browser. So by day, uh, I help Netflix get to devices. Basically, my team uh, helps the devices organization at Netflix scale so partners can get their, the Netflix SDK into their devices like smart TVs, game consoles, so they can go to market and you guys can enjoy your shows. Um, but by night, I build software to help understand human behavior. And this brings us to NeuroJavaScript, right? My goal with NeuroJavaScript is to basically bring neurotechnology to the JavaScript community. This community has, as you probably know, s a lot of potential and so many smart people and so many contributions and the way problems are solved are very, very unique, right? We have a language that we can run on both the server um, and the client, right? And this is going to enable us to do many, many things because this is the most accessible platform ever. The way we do this is actually by working with biosignals. And biosignals are basically uh, a combination of different types of signals uh, from our brains and our bodies. Uh, a good example would be EEG. Uh, who here has heard of EEG before? Awesome, so EEG um, stands for electroencephalogram and is the way we can actually measure the electrical activity produced uh, from our scalps, right? Then we have other types like EMG that it does the same thing but uh, actually muscle data uh, from devices like the one we're in right now. It picks up uh, that those electrical impulses produced by muscles. And that would be called an electromyogram. Uh, then we have other types that involve uh, measuring also the activity but from uh, our eyes, right? Or actually uh, our, our hearts. So when, whenever you see um, a heart uh, pulse monitor, displaying the heartbeats, that would be, for example, ECG. And this is fascinating because with biosignals, if you think about it, 
there's like so many, many problems that you can work on. And this is pretty much endless. Um, and this is just like to throw just a bunch of buzzwords in order to see how we can approach a lot of these different bias signals, right? Like we're going to be working with full-time data that we're going to be capturing from our brains or our bodies, and then uh, we need to cap we, we need to communicate with these devices with different protocols. We're going to be using probably Bluetooth. We're going to be using Wi-Fi. Um, we're going to be probably wanting to do some data visualizations in order to see what we're working with. Um, and then we're going to be using uh, web sockets in order to send the communication from the server to the client, or just web Bluetooth in order to get that data directly on the web browser. So like, there's many, many things that we can do here that would definitely challenge you uh, as an engineer in a very good way. And uh, personally, I've learned so much from just trying to tackle a little problem at a time. But my favorite part of all of this is just the brain waves. I'm, I'm obsessed with brain waves. I think about brain waves all day as I'm actually creating my own brain waves. And actually, people are starting to get very familiar with what, what this means, right? If anyone here have not heard of brain waves before, that was 0% of you. Awesome. So we've seen this in movies before, movies like Back to the Future. We've seen this in TV shows like Stranger Things, you know, like that little nerdy hat that they put uh, on Eleven in order to measure uh, her powers. Then something crazy started happening this year. Like Facebook starting to announce that they've been doing work with brain computer interfaces, uh, their secret building aid. Um, Elon Musk said that, uh, just well, announced earlier this year that now um, of, of his new company called Neuralink. Um, but why? Why is, is this actually becoming such a, such a big deal now? Think about it. We have tools to communicate with computers already. We have keyboards. We have mouses, right? We have trackpads, and we have uh, many tools. But the thing is, none of them really go at the pace that we would go or at the speed of our thoughts, right? And just think about that. How fast our, our, our thoughts are. How productive would it be if what you want to get done, you do it by thinking on how you would be doing it, instead of having to code. I'm not telling you that you won't <laughs> have to code anymore. Like, there's going to be code. But like, this is a big deal, because this is getting us closer to, to the technology, right? And we have this new, let's say, generation with BCIs might, for the, for the first time, really start getting not only to consumers, but it could start being something that it's, it's just like wearing anything else or not. One of the reasons um, also why BCIs are, they, they have a lot of momentum right now is because now we have brain-computer interfaces that are open source. For example, OpenBCI here is, is, a, is a company that uh, they produce um, brain-computer interface that they open source both the hardware and the software, right? So they are bringing this technology that uh, historically has been extremely expensive to a very affordable pr price uh, and completely hackable, completely open. You can get up and running pretty much instantly. And this is enabling to not only scientists, but also artists and engineers to start getting into this uh, industry of brain-computer interfaces and, te and technology and wearables that is creating a lot, a lot, a lot of very amazing work out there. Um, this is just uh, a picture of the actual OpenBCI uh, board, which is what is uh, what powers uh, the actual headset, right? And gets, captures the electrical activity from your brain and then sends it over via Bluetooth. Uh, it's also possible to use a shield in order to enable communication with Wi-Fi, but this is rapidly evolving, right? Um, now, we're able actually to, with this type of technology, to start streaming 
brain waves in real time from our heads to the cloud, right? And then receiving that in a web browser, for example. But one of the things that I really appreciate about this project is that it gives you the raw signals. Some of the companies, they have some consumer uh, brain computer interfaces. They charge you a monthly fee in order for you to get your own data. Uh, this project, OpenBCI, is all about giving you all the tools that you need so you can get uh, be creative. But the raw data, if you think about it, uh, actually, like it's it's very difficult to work with, right? There are many challenges. One of them is that um, when we are receiving uh, that signal from our scalp, they come in volts or microvolts, right? Because at the end of the day, it's just electricity. Uh, but in order to make some sense out of it, and when I say make some sense, just interpret certain certain things at a very very high level, you have to convert those that electrical unit to frequencies, right? Just wave, brain waves. And this is when it gets interesting because depending on the uh, hertz range of the brain wave, you can, it maps directly into certain uh, states, right? For example, uh, the delta state uh, that is like a very, very, very low uh, hertz uh, it maps to like when you're like very deep sleep and dreaming. So for example, companies that are using brain computer interfaces in order to monitor sleep are probably uh, focusing on the delta range of our brain waves. And then we have theta, we have alpha and beta, and each one of them, they correspond to other states. For example, uh, one of my favorites, my two favorites are the beta and the alpha. Uh, the beta are what we're usually, um, in, in the state that we're mo the, the most, like that we are, in. Uh, it's like attention and working and just being kind of active. And then alpha is when you're relaxed and you have, you enter into this state of like meditation. And uh, when you start, and, and these are things that you can actually try to control a little bit, right? Uh, have any of you guys tried to meditate? Right. Okay. Uh, I've tried. I'm just going <laughs> to say it. I've tried. And the interesting part is that when you are transitioning from an active state to a relaxation state, your brain waves start you know, changing. So there are even companies that they have uh, um, very small like headbands that they capture these states in order to give you feedback of how good or, 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 or how, what is your progress when it comes to meditation. There is a product called the Muse Band um, that you can use and it basically is an iPhone app. You put the headband, and then you start to meditate, it walks you through what to do, and it tells you, okay, this is what's your progress. This is basically your active state, and this is how relaxed you were at what time. Um, that being said, let's go back to some just raw AEG, right? When I talk about sample rate, what I mean is like, how many uh, data packets am I going to be getting each second, right? In a, in a second of period of time, how many of these data points I'm, I'm going to be receiving from my brain computer interfaces? And in this example, uh, OpenBCI, I can get 250, which is like uh, maybe one packet every four milliseconds, which is like pretty, pretty fast, right? It is a very, very decent resolution. And the higher the resolution, the more data you have, and the more, uh, the, the, the better that uh, you can work with that. And when I say sample or data packet, this is what I mean. It's just basically, if we're talking JavaScript here, it's just uh, an object with some metadata. With the most important being channel data. So for example, this uh, BCI that I have here on stage has eight channels uh, from eight different parts of your head. And this is exactly why in channel data is in an array of eight numbers. So you're going to be getting this type of data structure every four milliseconds, right? To give you some context. All right, without further ado, I just want to super quickly um, give you a demo on what that looks like uh, so we can start breaking it down. Uh, I'm going to need a volunteer, but I'm going to actually Ben Lesh. Thank you, Ben. I've got metal fillings. Is that OK? You have a me metal fillings? It could explode. Okay. No, you're fine. All right, so let's do this quickly because I have so much to show you. Just sit down, relax. Um, I'm going to actually. Yeah. 
I'm going to plug in a little dongle that connects to the open, uh, with a computer, brain computer interface. Uh, this headset is for medium sized heads. Do you, I, I think it's, you, should, you should be okay, like it should totally fit you. Yeah. Well, let's see. Oh, no. Too big. Oh, oh, you do have a big head. Give me a second. I, I have to, I have to like adjust this. Are you able to see what I'm thinking? Uh oh. Right. Do you have anything to hide? Okay, this is going to be recorded, sir. They're, they're going to find out that RX is really just a bunch of promise implementations. Like <laughs> well, it's good that you came clean finally about RxJS. All right, let's see. Oh, this is a little better. A little better? Yeah. I yeah. think we probably might be able to fit it to you. So having a big head is nothing wrong, you know? <laughs> we, we have heads of all sizes. Yeah. Um, sweet. I got a medium one because I, I think I have a medium head. Um, oh, there you go. No, this is good. great. Are you feeling these electrodes here at the top of your head? Yeah, They're going to be a little spiky, okay? <laughs> just, just a little spiky. If it hurts, just let me know because it could be a little bit uncomfortable at times. Good. All right. Let's leave it there for, for a second and let's just, and let's just, I'm going to connect the earlobes just to ground the electricity. Right. The yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not touching your ears at all. This is... Is it on yet? Uh, no, yeah. I am going to turn it on, though. Okay. All right, get ready. Okay. I see a blue light. I'm going to go to my computer, and then I'm going to quickly run a programming node that is designed to receive these signals and then send it via a socket. Uh, I smell toast. Is that normal? <laughs> <laughs> it's not normal, let me tell you. Uh, we're getting some... Oh, we're getting some data here. Awesome. You have... Yeah, it's probably too tight. I've got some numbness in my cheek. You have some numbness in your no, cheek. No, okay. <sighs> Don't worry. Almost seeing some activity. Okay. Okay, let's leave it there for now. Uh, we might have some derail data, but just for the sake of showing you, let's just open our Angular app. Sponsored by the Angular CLI. Wait, where's Mike? Thank you, Mike. <laughs> wah, 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 wah. All right, so there you go. There is some real time brain waves in the browser. Uh, this has a does, doesn't fit quite right. I mean, you know. How do you know my brain's just not working? Uh, actually, <laughs> if, if you look back, we can see that channel four, there's no data. So one, two, three, four. This electro could be making more contact here. I, I hit my head yesterday, so. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, there you go. You do have something on the side of your head. I was getting a little worried. All right, so that's very much the browser in a nutshell. Thank you so much, Ben. Please give it up for Ben. <laughs> All right, so that was an Angular application. And uh, what I want to do is just walk you through um, how to do that, right? So let's just start by sending brain waves to the browser, and let's just do it in 12 lines of code. So bear with me. We're going to be doing an npm install. We're going to be saving OpenBCI RX. OpenBCI RX is a library that I created that wraps the normal OpenBCI node SDK and gives you a brain observable out of it. So you can work with brain waves in a reactive manner. And then uh, we have Socket.io and Socket.io Client. Socket.io is going to be our server. The client is going to be receiving those uh, events. We start by creating a brain observable uh, from the Open uh, BCI Rx package, and we're going to be accessing Cyton. Cyton happens to be the name of the board that Ben just tried. Open BCI has it right now like two different boards, you know, processors. The other one is called. Um, Ganglion, which is the newer version. I have one here if you guys want to see it later. But after we have a bring observable, we can start creating our I.O. connection uh, by requiring socket.io, and then we pass a port uh, where this data is going to be sent to. Um, this line, not too important. This is just trying to figure it out if I enter some arguments in my node command line so I can just simulate some brainwaves because I'm not going to be wearing the headset all the time as I'm working with brainwaves. Uh, we can actually get some simulated data. 
options is to pass to this observable. And in this case, um, we're going to ber verbose just means that the, in the command line, we're going to be outputting everything that the VCI is aware of. And secondly, passing whether we're simulating or not. This is when it gets interesting, right? We're going to be creating a brainwave stream, right? And I know, Ben, I know I have a subscribe later. It's a subscription, but just bear with me. Uh, I'm passing the options, and then we can start adding operators. The cool thing is that the operators that you're going to see are operators that I created custom that are designed to work with this data type from OpenBCI. So you don't have to redo the things that we usually have to do each time with OpenBCI. Like, OK, we are getting our data in volts. Let's convert it to microvolts. Let's just buffer the data so we're not sending socket events every four millisecond. Let's just buffer, let's say, 250 samples and then send a, a single array with those 256 samples. Uh, grouping by channel is changing the data structure in a way that is just easier to work with when it comes to data visualization. Lastly, we're going to subscribe. And we're just passing a function that is just simply takes the buffer created by the brainwave stream and is emitting that with, as a socket event. That's all we're doing for my demo uh, in order to get brainwaves to the browser. Awesome. So um, if you're interested in working with this, you can check out the library OpenBCI RX. You can use it with similar data and get started. Um, but let's now look at the Angular side of things because this is an Angular conference, right? So um, this might be a little bit confusing, but I just want to give you a, a very high level of how, what does it take to work with Canvas in, uh, in Angular uh, using this data structure. I'm actually using something called Smoothie Charts. But um, I'm iterating over Canvases, which is an array of eight arrays. Each one of the arrays is a channel. So we're going to iterate eight times. And that's exactly what you saw, that we had eight different lines. So this is what is creating those eight different lines. Um, we have some, ng, uh, some diffs with ng style just to color some of the uh, data. So we can differentiate the different channels. Um, uh, but ultimately, the most important part of this is just that we have a canvas DOM element. Some of the dependencies here are smoothie charts, which is a uh, um, a package that allows you to do time series, which is exactly the type of visualization that you saw. So this was not built from scratch. I'm using Angular. I'm using Smoothie. Um, I have some custom service that I created to just abstract things out. And now I'm using IO client to receive those socket events. Um, one thing that I'm doing is that I am accessing from our native element from our view, basically, this parent element section, right? I'm accessing it, uh, and I'm going and I'm finding all of the canvases. And then for each one of those canvases, I'm just initializing uh, the data visualization by calling dot stream two. So we're taking a canvas DOM element and we're uh, doing actually we're taking the canvas from smoothie and we are streaming to uh, the actual DOM element. Um, then we start what's called a time series. So for each one, you're going to see a lot of, like, for each, it's going to iterate eight times because we have eight different channels. It's going to start accessing the canvas, and then it's going to be uh, initializing with uh, a, a time series, uh, a time series method, setting the line width of the data visualization, setting some colors from a data structure that is not very relevant right now. This is when it gets tricky because this could be easily done. Um, in RxJS, if we're getting uh, events as long, like as soon as, as, as they're firing, let's say if we're getting events every four milliseconds, we just say, OK, each time I get an event, just draw. Just draw the next point in the time series. But I wanted to get super fancy. And actually, Ben helped me a little bit with this. And the challenge here was uh, that I wanted to buffer 256 elements. And as soon as I got them into the browser, I wanted to start sending each one in an interval uh, that, at the end, the last element in the array would uh, end right there when the next event comes. So you're simulating that it's real time. It has less than a second of, uh, of like lag. But uh, it's pretty effective and very performant. 
So I won't get into this. I have a more simplified example, but I just want to show you some of the power of RxJS because working with real-time data, um, I tried many, many things. RxJS has been the solution for me right now. Ultimately, we're drawing by appending into one of those eight lines with the current time, so it draws exactly when you get the data, the amplitude, which is the value for each channel. So this is the most complex example that you're going to see. And I just wanted to share that with you. From now on, I'm going to show you uh, some other examples that are actually even simpler. So I wanted to take a moment to talk about another brain-computer interface that I actually brought. This one is called the NeurSky. And this is also an affordable brain-computer interface that has some great capabilities, at the same time has some limitations. For example, uh, in this, with this brain-computer interface, you're getting one electrode here, as opposed to having eight, one, uh, eight electrodes with the open BCI, right? So this is like um, a more like simplistic design, but it serves a specific purpose. Because open BCI, you can do many, many things, including actual uh, scientific research. Uh, with this one, um, you are getting already the data in frequency, so you don't have to do the transformation, which is very cool. But you also get some data that they're uh, calling essence, that they actually giving you an attention per, uh, percentage and a meditation percentage. So just from this part of my brain, we're going to be getting some uh, data directly from the headset without having to do any processing of data analysis that is going to tell us our meditation and our um, attention. OK, so what I want to do is uh, actually, before I show you code, I want to show you how that looks like. This is our second demo. I'm going to stop this one. It's good. All right, so I'm starting with a node. I'm getting some data here. It's connected up here. OK, so um, go with me. I put this together last night. I went to bed around 5 AM. And this is highly experimental, just to give you a little taste of uh, this headset. So what I'm going to show you is that you're going to see an Angular application with an image. It's going to be a big image, but it's going to be blurred. It's going to be very, very blurred. So uh, the goal for this experiment is to my attention level try to sharpen the image for my brain, right? And uh, attention, right? Um, it can be interpreted in different ways. But uh, let's just give that a try, and let's see if I can get that Im image to be actual sharpened, and we can uh, understand it. Are you guys ready? Yes. Yeah, I, I, I didn't hear you. Yeah. yeah, thank you. I was like, all right, let's do it. Getting the data here. So this is properly set. I cannot focus.
All right, so this is mapped to my attention as of 5 a.m. last night. My attention this morning is different, so I'm going to change my offset. I'm going to cheat a little bit with you guys here. And uh, I'm going to go to my code, and I'm going to say extract 60. Let's say uh, I, I have twice the attention yes, yesterday. Go easy on me. <laughs> I haven't slept much. There you go. All right. I don't know why, but Shai always appears out of nowhere, so I figured, <laughs> why not? OK, guys, so let's just see how uh, quickly, how do we make this happen in Angular? Very similar to uh, our code to get uh, OpenBCI Rx to stream right from the server. This is our node server here. Instead of doing OpenBCI Rx, we're using Node Thin Gear Sockets, which is a library that allows you to connect uh, to the um, Mindset NeuroSky headset. And we have the same I.O. We have an observable, because I, I make everything observable these days. Um, we create a client. We connect. We create an observable from an event. We pass that client. And we say, OK, whenever you receive the, the event data, then uh, call my function, send to browser. And my metric is EEG, and that will send the event. Now, you saw that with OpenBCI, we were getting packets very, very quickly. I actually didn't show you how quickly we can get it. Let me show you how quickly we can actually get it. Let's see, uh, code, uh, OpenBCI Rx, and then it's like node, examples, basic. Oh, OK. Uh, this is how fast we get it with OpenBCI, okay? It's every four milliseconds. It's blazingly fast. With the mindset, uh, near sky, we get it every second. So the sample rate is very different, right? But it, then it gives you that essence that I was telling you about, which is like the attention meditation, and it, it gives you like all the ranges, which is amazing. I think it's super cool. So going back to the presentation, we're sending this data every second to the browser, right? The data looks like this. I'll let you read it for a little bit. And then, this is my whole component that I did. If you see, we have an image here. Uh, we're binding to the source where I'm passing, let's say, line, this line image here, which is a picture of Shai Resnick, right? And then we have some ng style that maps to an async pipe called a tension filter. A tension filter is actually uh, using these brain waves. Brain waves is uh, doing an observable from an event. To, uh, for, from the socket, so this is what gets the actual data. But we're mapping it to an object containing a filter, and then we have a blur function in CSS, right? Uh, a filter, a blur in CSS, 
that maps to the absolute number of my attention minus some type of offset in pixels. That was it. That was all I did. So you can see how quickly you can actually get up and running. And you could use this attention and meditation and some of the uh, other waves uh, to, like, I don't know, fly a drone and do very, very cool stuff. It's very hackable. Uh, it's pretty cool. Um, I already showed you this demo. Uh, so I have one last demo today. This one is actually very simple. But I want to talk, and I want to mention that we've seen brainwaves, right? From the OpenBCI, we saw brainwaves from in the New York sky. But brainwaves is not everything that New York JavaScript is about. Remember that we have many different type of bias signals. I want to take a little bit and show you EMG, which is data from our muscles. So we're going to be using this guy to get some data from my arm and my hands and my gestures and displaying them in Angular. What do you guys say? Yeah. All right. So. OK, you can calm down now. <laughs> All right, so I think this demo is the port 44. By the way, this is the third demo. All of them are using the Angular CLI, and they're all using uh, RxJS. We happen to have the people doing all this work here, so please give it up for them. <laughs> I'm going to be showing you orientation, accelerometer, and gyroscope. And as you can see, this is very, very responsive to my movement. But when I start moving, you can see how the data start changing right away. We're binding from Bluetooth to the browser to an observable that is bind, bound to a dumb element with an async pipe again in Angular. That's how simple it is. I'm not trying to show off how strong I am, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to do this motion here. All right, so you get the idea. My point here is that getting this bio signals to the browser is very easy. Um, I know a lot of people are intimidated by how difficult it sounds or it might appear. So I wanted to show you some examples that I'm open sourcing and have on GitHub for you guys to play around with. Um, all right. Real quick, let's just see. Um, this is muscle data from EMG, right? And IMU is actually the inertial measurement unit that encapsulates some of this accelerometer, gyroscope, um, and the other one is orientation data. Um, and this is the Mayo armband. This is actually a consumer product that you can get on Amazon. Uh, for a couple hundred bucks, and it gives you uh, many things. The ones that I use for this presentation, this is the sample that I'm using. So it is basically an object with orientation, accelerometer, and gyroscope. At the end of the day, guys, we're going to be just messing with numbers. We're going to be working with numbers that are going to be uh, that represent certain aspect of this bio signal, right? Uh, we're going to be getting numbers very fast, very often. And it is our job to then take that data and do something meaningful with it. The sampling rate here is pretty high, actually. It's 200 hertz. Um, to, to give you context, OpenBCI is 250. This one is 200. Uh, New York Sky was like, well, one. Well, a sample every second, not like a sample every five milliseconds, right, or 20. Um, the IMG data that I showed you in the browser was, is actually 50 hertz, which is 20. Every 20 milliseconds, we're going to be getting a new packet. Um, the cool thing, it detects some, gest some gestures. Uh, you can make a fist, and you can get this in events in JavaScript, the same way you would do an uh, uh, event listener on this or on that. Like You are going to be getting events uh, to correspond with all that. I just show you the rotation and some of the direction. I, I have another demo that I can show you later. I just don't have enough time. Uh, when I do a pose in JavaScript, I'm, I'm using the, a, a speech synthesis to just speak the, the name of the pose. And it works really nicely. I show you the demo. Let's see how this looks in code. We have to see the code. I create a very, very small service that wraps Mayo, connects Mayo. Uh, this, by the way, you can put whatever you want in there. Um, and then it creates an observable from an event based uh, on this Mayo class. It's, I just did this because I wanted to be able to just inject that service into 
my different components and then start getting from different events. It's very straightforward. And this is my whole component. I'm using uh, my service that I just showed you in line two. Uh, you're probably familiar with uh, Angular component syntax, the selector, the template URL, the styles. And then my component class is as simple as uh, getting the event from the Maya that is called IMU, which is gets you the sample, right? And then I'm mapping that to a data structure that is more friendly for us that when we're in the in DOM land, we can just uh, iterate with an ng4 and bind to that observable and uh, do a uh, pipe async. I, I'm in love with pipe async. It's for me the idea of, for me the idea of binding to an observable in DOM in HTML asynchronously, it's crazy. Um, so the metric would be either the orientation, acceleration as a word, or gyroscope. And then from each one, you saw that we have like X, Y, and Z. We're iterating for each one of those. I'm calling that prop, right? So prop would be X, Y, and Z. And then I have a meter element. How many of you have used the meter element in HTML5? It exists. Who knew? One person. <laughs> nice. So a meter is just like a progress element. Uh, it's just uh, different. <laughs> and uh, I'm just binding the value to uh, the value of that property. So this line here, value, basically is going to look for each one of these things exactly how you saw it in the demo. So I have two loops, one going through each one of these, and for each one of these, I'm looping for each one of the properties. And that's it. So how do you, how do we get there? How, from our brains, our bodies, even our muscle, how do we get to the world? Well, I have to tell you that we're learning a lot about the human brain, right? Um, more than ever before. We have now access to hardware that is actually accessible, hackable, it's open, and it's affordable. Things like OpenBCI, NeurSky, and many other uh, hardwares are allowing us to access this data, these this, this biosignals. Then we have amazing ecosystem in JavaScript, and I'm just putting RxJS there, but we have so many other tools that allows us to, real, to really work with this data in a way that makes sense and that we can actually do something with it. Uh, without having to uh, go crazy. Then we have amazing, amazing technologies. We have um, Angular, we have Angular CLI, we have everything that is powering our UIs. We have it available. This is thousands and thousands of man hours. Hardware, uh, the ecosystem, uh, the, the UI tools and all that is, is work that is being given to you for free. Just think about it. And uh, that's how we get there is open source, is the open source community, is what is driving that. So my, my goal is to be part of this community and to um, you know, um, try to make this even more appealing and accessible and try to actually make some sense out of this data so hopefully this could be useful and this could actually mean saving people's lives. Uh, I've, I've been contacted by um, hospitals that they use uh, one of my data visualization tools for OpenBCI to visualize during uh, eye surgery to see whether or not while the doctor was performing surgery, if, they, if, the, if, the, if the neurons around the eyes were actually still working fine, even with all, everything that was going on. You can make that same difference. Neural JavaScript uh, is on GitHub. The three demos that I showed you today are right there. You can see that I updated them nine minutes ago. Um, and most importantly, uh, we're here today not just to show you what I've done, but to do something together. Uh, so this is why I'm very excited about Hack Night on Thursday. I have so much gear, guys. Uh, I don't even know how I, I was able to bring all this stuff, but um, join me during Hack Night at 8, 8 p.m. somewhere on this boat. I don't know yet. Maybe Tracy, you can tell me later. Um, I have the OpenBCI. I'm going to let you use it. I have the Ganglion, which is the newer version of that. We have actually some uh, more electrodes that you, you can put anywhere. I have the Mayo. You can use it too. I have the Muse. Uh, if you want to see some meditation data, I have the nearest guy. And then I have 
uh, an EE EMG uh, sensor that you can hack it to measure uh, muscle activity, and a pulse sensor, um, plus tons of other toys that you guys can use. Um, this is some of the hacks that some people have done in the past. Uh, it's a lot of fun, and I'm, I'm here to help you uh, as much as I can. So thank you.